Number one says that we've got painters and, and carpenters using scaffolding to climb buildings from the outside. What shapes do you see and why does one figure have more right angles? So, I mean, we can see some triangles, you can see some rectangles, maybe this is a square. Um, these ones look almost like squares, but then it doesn't really look like there's right angles here. It looks like this one's slanted more than this one. Um, so maybe these ones actually are trapezoids. So let me just kind of highlight that one. See if yellow will work here. Um, but so it kind of looks like this slants more than those. So maybe these two are right angles, but then not down here. Uh, so maybe we have a trapezoid there. And then over here, you can kind of see these um, diagonals here, which then are creating um, squares here and right angles. And so we, whoops, get um, more right angles in this one because of the diagonals crossing at the midpoint. So when you've got diagonals that are the same length and then they cross at the midpoint, that forces um that forces the right angles in there. Okay, number two says select all true statements based on the diagram. So based on this diagram is angle CBE. So CBE congruent to um, ABE. So is this angle congruent to this angle? And that is false. Angle CEB, so CEB is right here. Is this angle congruent to angle DEA? This one, and that is true because they are vertical angles. Um, CDA is, so segment DA is congruent to segment CB, and that is true. We can see that marked on the picture with the tick marks. Segment DC is congruent to um, segment AB. That is false. Okay, they have arrows on them, but arrows don't mean congruent. They mean parallel, which is what E says. So DC is parallel to AB, and that's true from the markings. And then line DA is parallel to line CB. That is false. Number three, prove that ABCD is a parallelogram. So we need to prove that it's a parallelogram. Remember that parallelograms, the definition is that they have two um, sets of parallel sides. So that's what we're ultimately trying to prove. And we see that they actually gave us one set. So we already know that DC and AB are parallel. So what we're actually trying to prove here is that DA is parallel to CB. And remember that we prove lines are parallel um, by showing that corresponding angles or alternate interior angles are congruent. So if I can show that I've got a set of alternate interior angles congruent, then those lines would be parallel. And I will be able to because I see that these two triangles are congruent by side, side, side. All three sets of sides are equal. So that means, um, corresponding angles in these triangles will be equal. So this one is going to be equal to this one. And those are alternate interior on those lines. So that's kind of the plan here. So let's actually type this out. So we know that D, um, we know that DE is equal to EB, AE is equal to EC, and AD is equal to um, CB because it is given to us. So because we've got all three sets of those sides equal, so because we have three sets of corresponding sides congruent, we know that we know that triangle DEA is congruent to triangle, um, so I said DEA, so congruent to triangle BEC by side, 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 triangle congruence. 
then we know that um, angle ADE is congruent to angle, so ADE is congruent to CBE because they are corresponding parts of congruent triangles. Um, angle, therefore, okay, maybe we don't use therefore because we're not going to end. Since we know angle ADE and CBE are congruent, we know that um, side AD is parallel to side CB because alternate interior angles are congruent. Therefore, we know DC is parallel to AB because it was given to us. Actually, we probably don't need to say that. Okay, so we know that those are congruent and AD is parallel to CB. Um, so ABCD is a parallelogram by definition. And if we want to, we probably could put... Um, in here, we could probably put, we know that um, DC is parallel to AB, um, so that it's in our proof, so the given parallel sides. All right, then um, number four, Tyler has proven that triangle WY, WYZ, so this one here is congruent to triangle WYX by side, side, side. So we know that this is the third set of sides since WY is in both. Why can he now conclude that WY, so this segment here, bisects this angle and this angle? So how do we know that? Um, so since um, the two triangles are congruent, angle... Um, X, Y, W, and Z, Y, W are congruent, and um, Z, W, Y angle, Z, W, Y, and X, W, Y are congruent because they are corresponding parts of congruent triangles. And so those are the two angles that we just marked. Therefore, um, WY is an angle bisector by definition. Number five, um, WXYZ is a kite. Angle WXY has a measure of 133 degrees. So WXY is 133 degrees. And ZYX, so this larger angle here, is 34 degrees. Find the measure of ZWY. So find the measure of this little angle here. So we know in a kite that the diagonal that splits up those congruent sides is also also splits the two triangles into congruent triangles. If we look at this, then we could see by side, side, side. So we know that this angle is also 133 degrees. And then we know the total of a quadrilateral is 360. So we could take 360 minus both 133s and minus the 34. And we find out that we have 60 degrees left over for um, this angle. And then the two angles, this one and this one, are both congruent. So we can just divide this by two. And then we would get 30 degrees um, for Z, W, Y. Number six, Elena is thinking through a proof using a reflection to show that the base angles of an isosceles triangle are congruent. Complete the missing information for her proof. So call the midpoint of segment CD what? So here is segment CD. So what, what are we call, what's the midpoint of that? We're calling it B. Construct the perpendicular bisector of segment CD. So we'll construct the perpendicular bisector 
um, on this picture. So remember, we started with an isosceles triangle. So now construct the perpendicular bisector. The perpendicular bisector must go through B since it's the midpoint. So bisector hits at the midpoint. A is also on the perpendicular bisector of CD because the distance from A to what is the same as A to what? So A is the same distance from D as it is from C. So the distance from A to D is the same as A to C. So we know that means it must be on the perpendicular bisector. We want to show that triangle ADC, so ADC is congruent to triangle ACD. Okay, um, reflect triangle ADC across what line? So what are we gonna reflect the triangle across to flip it on itself is gonna be across line AB. Since what is on the line of reflection, it stays lined up with itself. So from this big triangle that we flipped, what of these, what is staying in the same spot? And that's going to be point A. So since A is on the line of reflection, it definitely lines up with itself. Then DB is congruent to, so DB is congruent to BC. Since AB is the perpendicular bisector. D prime will coincide with what? So when we flip across this um, line of reflection, where is the image of D going to land? Well, that's going to land on C since it's on the other side of the perpendicular line and the same distance from it. C prime will coincide with, so where's the image of C going to go when we flip it over? And that's going to go on D since it's on the other side of the perpendicular line and the same distance from it. Since the rigid transformation will take ADC onto ACD, that means that angle D will be taken onto angle C. They are corresponding parts under the same reflection and therefore they are congruent. Number seven, segment EG is an angle bisector of angle FGH. So EG is an angle bisector of FGH. Noah wrote a proof to show that triangle HEG is congruent to triangle FEG, but his proof is not correct. Why is the proof incorrect? So read through it until you find um, the spot that he is incorrect. So first he says that EG is congruent to EG because they're the same segment. That's definitely true. Angle EG... H, so EGH is here, is congruent to EGF, this one, because EG is the angle bisector. EG is the angle bisector of FGH, so that's true. Then he goes on to say that angle HEG is congruent to FEG because EG is the angle bisector of this purple angle. So that's not true because EG would need to be the angle bisector of this angle in order for it to split it into two equal parts. And that was not said in this proof. So this is false. And therefore, he actually can't prove that the two triangles are congruent. There isn't enough information. All right, then finally, number eight figure. Um, this figure is the image of this figure after being rotated 90 degrees counterclockwise around point K. So we are taking um, this shape here and we're just rotating it 90 degrees counterclockwise to get the other one. They want us to draw an auxiliary line in ABCD KLMN to create a quadrilateral and then draw the image after it's rotated 90 degrees around K. So you can do a bunch of different um, things here. Probably I'm going to do this so I can kind of split it to two quadrilaterals. And then where would this line be in this one after being rotated? And that's going to be there. Then they want us to write a congruent statement for our quadrilateral. So it depends on which quadrilateral you use. I'm going to do C, D, K, L. So C, D, K, L. So when this is rotated, C lands on M. D lands on L. Um, K stays the same. And then L rotates to E.